the Bible reads in verse number 37, Then saith he uh, in, uh, unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. So there's a big harvest, there's a plentiful harvest, there's a great harvest. There's no question about the size of the harvest. There's yeah. no question about the plentifulness of the harvest. But right. here's the problem. But the laborers are few. Yeah. The, the harvest isn't in question then. The laborers are in question. Right. Uh, the amount of, uh, of corn growing in the field is not the problem. Right. The problem is do we have workers to get it out of the right. field? Yeah. Uh, the problem is not do we have orders to make. The problem is do we have people uh, to make the orders. So right. The problem is we have a shortage of labor. Yeah. Shortage of labor. Yeah. Now if that's not America today, I don't know what is. There's a shortage of labor. Amen. Uh, oh man, people just don't want to work. They want to sit around all day and eat Doritos yeah. and, eat, and, and drink right. pop and do nothing with themselves. Yeah. I say you ought to get out of bed and go to work. Oh, Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I like going to work, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Unless you're retired, then you stay home. <laughs> all right. Verse 30, oh, that was, oh, that was free. Verse 38. Uh, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Amen. You can be seated today in the presence of our Lord. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. Uh, here in Matthew chapter number 9, Jesus speaks uh, of a great harvest. Uh, he's not speaking of a harvest of wheat uh, or of, uh, or of uh, watermelons or of corn or of grain, but he's speaking of a harvest of souls. He looks out into the city, and he had just been in, in verse number 35, and the Bible reads, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease yeah. among the people. So he had just been out in the community. Yeah. He had just been out in the harvest. He had just been out among the people. Uh, right before this, he just uh, he just cast out devils. And somebody yeah. said, well, Brother Jason, how do you get devil possessed? Well, all you really got to do is start playing around with the occult and playing right. around with darkness and oh. playing around with Ouija boards and playing around with uh, tarot cards and psychics and palm readers. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and all you got to do, really do, is get wrapped up in that black magic yeah. and pretty soon yeah. there'll be a devil at your door. The Bible said in verse 32, as they went out, behold, they brought a uh, him a dumb man possessed with a devil. So the devil got on the inside of him in a spiritual sense, uh, but in a physical sense, the devil would not allow him uh, to speak. In a physical sense, the devil would not allow him to open up his mouth. In a physical sense, the devil would not allow him to exercise his First Amendment rights and say that government has no business mandating
the synagogues. He's going around to all these villages and he's casting out the devil. Now he's got disciples with him and I'm sure they're working. But if you've got communities of people coming to you and you only got with 12 disciples plus yourself, you look around at the harvest and say, praise the Lord. The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray that the Lord of the harvest sends some more laborers in. souls that is coming our way. And what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying there is a shortage of laborers. I want to preach on that subject this morning. Shortages are coming. Shortages are coming. Have you ever thought about the fact that all you got to do is one Google search this morning and type in the word shortages are coming and you'll get about 72 different articles written within the past 24 to 48 hours that is warning you about the shortages that are coming. In fact, I read one this morning confused children but for some reason it just did the Lord just didn't let me get preach that one this morning but you look around at you ladies and gentlemen and the children of our society don't even know who they are anymore they have an identity crisis they, they're, 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 they don't know if they're a boy or a girl and they're a generation of confused children because they're raised by confused parents and they're educated by confused teachers come on amen but, but the Lord said don't preach on that one and I said well Lord on the fact that the laborers are few and that there's a shortage coming. Now I would submit to you that in, the, that in a big church, and I'm glad for big churches if they're preaching the gospel, if a church is preaching the gospel and it has 7,000 people in it, you'll never hear me say another bad word as long as they're being real with the gospel. As long as they're being forthright and not sugarcoating things and, 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 and preaching as it is, you'll never hear me say anything bad about it. Churches, they don't have a shortage of laborers because they got enough money coming in that they can pay people to labor. And they come on, they can pay the senior pastor, and they can pay the junior pastor, and they can pay the associate pastor, and they can pay the worship pastor, and they can pay the pay the deacon pastor, and they can pay the the, 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 the snow plowing pastor. They can play all. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's just 
there's a shortage of human bodies. <laughs> Hello. Right. And you say, they say, well, what, what? In, in the business world, they say, well, who are you looking for? I said, just make sure they got a pulse. <laughs> Can they stand in front of a mirror and fog it? Well, then I'll take them. Come on. We, we need people. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, amen. Sometimes I just need a body. Amen. Somebody, I can train somebody to do something if they can just have a pulse or willing to learn. Uh, sometimes we've got a shortage of bodies even in the house of God. And I would submit to you that in every small church across America, when pastors are truly being honest, they would say to you, I need some laborers in this harvest. They would say, I need some people to come out of retirement and begin to always work around. Oh, glory. Hello. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Amen. I need some, I need some labor in the harvest. Right? Yeah, that's right. You know what? There are shortages coming. More than likely. Right. I believe Madam Vice President. Ugh, yeah. Bless the Lord. I believe, uh, I believe a couple months ago she said uh, that you should start buying your Christmas presents real early because she understood that the shortages were already coming. Right? Amen. And a lot of times we're playing catch up to the fact that they're coming. You know we're ordering. If you order a brand new computer now, it takes six weeks to get it delivered. It, it does. There's a shortage of those chips and the chips that run those things for GM Chrysler, all their major yeah. auto manufacturers. They got trucks parked, but they can't start them up and sell them because they got a shortage of the chips that are coming from overseas. Which is why I say let's just manufacture the chip in America. Yeah. 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 But nevertheless, the shortages are coming. Amen. Right. I want to talk to you about I would submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the Christian church has been in shortage for quite some time. Right. Yeah. Shortages are making their way into our life yeah, yeah. and disrupting it in a way that we're noticing physical uh, things around us that are in short supply. Right. I remember when, when the pandemic, the, I mean, the pandemic first happened. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm not saying people are dying. I'm saying it feels awfully planned to me. Right. Hello. Yeah. Uh, set up from the one world government and the one world system and yeah. one world economy and a great reset and a taking of a dollar bill and high inflation, and unemployment and labor shortages. It feels awfully planned to me to rob me and to rob you of our freedoms and our liberties. And our rights say, come on. Amen. I remember though, at the beginning of the pandemic, I remember that I would go into the stores and I would try to find me some hand sanitizer and I couldn't find one of it. Right? Hello? Yeah, I'll go. And I went by the store one day and I looked down at the bottom shelf where nobody could see and I found me these little bitty bottles of Purell hand sanitizer. Praise the Lord. And they were a dollar a piece. And I thought I'm going to pay a dollar for one ounce of Purell hand sanitizer. And I scooped up, I scooped them up and put them in, the, in, in my cart. And I, but I left some for somebody else. Right. Hello, I did. It's a true story. Yeah. And when I got to the register, the man said, "Hey, where'd you find those?" He was working at the store. Where'd you find those? I said, "Man, they were hidden down there in that bottle." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
preachers? Yeah. yeah. Hello. That's right. And, and I didn't, some days I didn't have to preach. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There used to be a day in this church uh, uh, where we had all kinds of preachers. And, I, and I, but not only that, and I, I remember as we started to have a shortage of preachers, I remember watching other churches, and they seemed to have a few more than we did. And I remember thinking to myself, man, it'd be nice to have that many preachers so, so I could take a Sunday off every once in a while. That yeah. wasn't too long until I watched and they ran out of preachers too because preachers quit preaching and deacons quit deacon and singers quit singing and prayers quit praying and people quit worshiping and all of a sudden I looked around and there was a shortage in the house of God. Ladies and gentlemen, shortages are coming but beyond that, shortages have been here for years in the spiritual realm. Amen. 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 Right. Good one. When's the last time you heard of a devil being genuinely cast out? <laughs> Hello? Oh, yeah. We don't even have enough spiritual power to work them up anymore. Right. You know why they used to get cast out? Because we had enough Holy Ghost power that they get worked up. But now we don't have enough Holy Ghost power because we're too addicted to this cell phone. We can't even make it through one church without one church service without Twitter and Facebook. There's spiritual shortages everywhere. Come on. Oh, yeah. We're addicted to this stuff. We're addicted to our phones, but we're not addicted to God's book. We're addicted to our phones, but we're not addicted to prayer. We're addicted to our phones, but we're not addicted to anything spiritual. Amen. Come on. Come on. Man, I'm glad somebody's with me. Amen. Come on. Praise Amen. I used to think to myself, well, who can I have preached for me today? And a whole plethora of names came up. And I said, well, who can preach for me today? And I said, well, might as well be Jason going to preach today. <laughs> uh -huh. Poor Tom, one of the two. There's a spiritual shortage. Sometimes we have shortages just for bodies. Right. Yeah, that's for right. bodies, for people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And by the way, even if you don't want to enter into the harvest, just keep bringing your body. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> if you don't, I'll probably start crying at some point. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good. Right? I mean, just show up at the very least. But I said to you, I said to you, man, we only got one life to live in and it'll soon be passed. And the only thing that's going to last is what we did for Jesus. The only thing I'll be able to take to heaven with me is the blood of Jesus and whatever I can do by the Spirit of God and by the grace of God for His kingdom. Not to earn my salvation, but because I have been saved, I want to work for the Lord. And I wonder, where is that desire? I mean, I remember, hello. That's right. Okay. That's good for you. Oh, yeah, come on. The good thing about being me is I've been at this for so long. True story. I've been at it for so long, and I and some days I am so tired that 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 uh, I don't even worry uh, about what people think anymore. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> I don't. Yeah, do it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I remember when, when years ago when, when the Super Bowl came on Sunday nights and people tell me, Brother Jason, it's just going to be this one Sunday night. Don't you worry about me. Uh -huh. Hello. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I remember when, 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 when they started telling me we're going to have baseball games on Sunday. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah. And they said, but don't you worry about me, Brother Jason. Uh -huh. I'll be back. Uh -huh. And then they, then they started telling me that, oh, by the way, we're going to have baseball games on Sunday, but we're going to have practice on Wednesday. Yeah. And I said, well, maybe I'll have a Thursday service then. They said, but wait a minute, we got practice on Thursday too. Uh -huh. And I said, well, when are you going to go to church? And they said, whenever I can. Uh -huh. And I said, let me tell you something. If you have that kind of commitment, it's going to be a very few, far between uh -huh. uh, situations. Uh -huh. with me to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. I preached a sermon a little while ago that says, can you handle the truth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. The question is, can we? 
Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 10, the Bible reads, And ran, ran, the brethren immediately, went, uh, immediately set away Paul and Silas by night into Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Uh, these were more noble than those of Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and watches, and searched the scriptures daily, and searched the scriptures daily. Did everybody say that with me? And searched the scriptures. And searched the scriptures. church on Sunday night and I think to myself, oh, wait a minute, I got nobody to preach and I got nobody to sing and I got nobody to come on and I actually sometimes I got nobody to come. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So I'm looking around and saying, where am I going to go to church at on Sunday night? Right. Right? Uh, so uh, so uh, I see it in me. I see it in me. I see a lackadaisical behavior approaching my heart. I, I see an empty spot where, where some hunger used to be. I see the world taking over my heart. And I see the walls needing to be built back up because we are dealing with spiritual shortages all around us. But if you are going to admit the fact that there may be some spiritual shortages in your life, don't let this one be one of them. That's right. Search, the scriptures. Search the scriptures daily. Amen. You know what will happen if you search the scriptures daily? The scriptures will feed you. Yeah, they will. You know what will happen if you search the scriptures daily? They'll instruct you. Yeah. They'll keep you. They'll, they'll nourish you. They'll strengthen you. They'll encourage you. They'll rebuke you. They won't give you a pass. Like, well, you know what? You know what I tend to do? I tend to give myself a pass on everything. Uh -huh. hey, come on. Uh -huh. It's kind of human nature. You do it too. That's right. Amen. I tend to give myself a pass on everything. Well, I don't do that because of this. Well, I'm not going to say that because of this. Well, I'm not going to see that because of this. Well, I'm, and I just give myself a pass on everything. But there's one thing about the Bible. The Bible's not afraid to offend us. Right. Sometimes even That's though right. I'm telling you, I'm old and tired and been at this thing a while. The, the truth is, I sometimes still am afraid to offend people. Uh, it still bothers me a little bit. But the Bible's unshakable. The Bible never worries about what kind of conclusion I'm going to wind up with. The Bible just says, here's the truth. Now take it and digest it and feed upon it and let it instruct you and let it guide you and let it help you and let it change your life. If there's anything I would tell my children as they're getting up all in years and they're becoming teenagers and they are teenagers and becoming young adults and, uh, and, I, and I watch them and sometimes I think to myself, where did them babies go? Yeah. Oh man, where did them babies go? Somehow I blinked and missed it. Uh, yeah. I don't like it either. Right. <laughs> I want to shrink them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where did the babies go? Uh, come on. And I think to myself, man, what a sad. Oh, man, I had a midlife crisis. Amen. Oh, man. Yeah. Might be. <laughs> so, but as they're getting up in years, I start hearing them say things. I think, Where in the world did you get that? Uh, I start hearing say things like, we need to get some stainless steel straws. Man, <laughs> <laughs> get up out of here with that. <laughs> man, man, I've been using a plastic straw for 38 years. Uh, they want to use stainless steel straws. You know why they want to do that? Because they've been seeing pictures of them turtles on the ocean with them straws sticking in their mouth and in their eyes and all that sort of thing, and they don't want they don't want to they don't want that to continue on. Uh, and I think that's an admirable thing. But my but, but my point is, I'm still using the plastic straw when I go to my house. <laughs> uh, but I think to myself sometimes I don't uh, as they're getting up older in years. 
years and I see their, 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 ch their changes that they're progressing and there's, if there's one message I would get to into their hearts it would be this don't be like me don't be like them don't be like them just be like Jesus and how are you going to be like Jesus you've got to search the scriptures do it daily don't let that shortage creep up in your life the shortage will kick it anybody that's right amen are you with me oh praise the Lord let me give you number two don't let this shortage be in your life uh, don't have a shortage of going to the house of God. Oh, sure. Amen. I want to say this clearly and publicly. There is no such thing as Zoom church. Right. Hello? That's right. That's right. Oh, I got quiet in here. <laughs> There's no such thing as YouTube church. That's right. right. Amen. Yeah, come on. Now, if you're going through uh, the beginning stages of a pandemic and and you're not exactly sure how things are going to wind up and you're not exactly sure how many people are going to die and, you, and I don't have any problem and in fact we played it cautious and I was I believe cautious was wise personally uh, and I still think it's wise uh, when I drive down the highway I put my seatbelt on how about y'all right. amen. amen so I think caution is wise but now that we've been going at this thing for a year and a half eventually we got to get off of YouTube church and Zoom church yeah. and we got to get back to the house yeah. of God Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You think there's a spiritual t a shortage of a church attendance? Yes, sir. I'm not saying you need to attend church like I do. I'm saying, do, 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 is there anything in us that wants to go at all anymore? Right. Come on. Right now it's 12.05. Uh-huh. 12.05. Uh-huh. Are you itching to get out? No, sir. Good, because I'm going to keep preaching. <laughs> But if you are, you can you feel free to go. I mean, uh, you won't offend, you won't offend me. But uh, uh, I just say to you this: if we are itching to get out of twelve oh five, maybe we have plans that we gotta keep. I get all that. I'm not talking about that. But if we're just gonna go home and watch TV and we're itching to get out of twelve oh five, and we just got here at eleven o'clock, maybe something. Maybe there's a short. Maybe there's a short somewhere. You just evaluate it and just think about it. I'm not. I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you. Examine it. Is there a spiritual shortage? Are your shelves empty? When's the last time you daily search the scriptures? And is there a desire to go into the house of the Lord? And have we been saved for 15 years and we haven't read through the Bible one time yet? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. Have we been, come on. Right. Have we been saved for 15 years and we haven't even uh, read through the New Testament yet? But we read a horoscope daily. Somebody that adding up to me, man. Yeah. There's a spiritual shortage going on. Yeah. And I'm wondering why there's so many, there's so few laborers. Sick. The sick don't get healed, the devils don't get cast out, and people aren't getting saved. I wonder why. And I wonder if it's because there's so much spiritual shortage. These physical shortages have been brought into our eyesight, but what about the spiritual shortage? Yeah. My job to you for you before you this morning is to make you realize that if you are the United States of America, there's ships sitting on your west coast and they're sitting on your east coast, and they can't get unloaded, and shortages are coming. Amen. You get that, right? Right. That's my job. Right. You said, Brother Jason, how much do you get paid for that? Zero. Right. right. Here. Yeah. I have a good retirement plan up there. Yeah. 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 You don't even have to worry about Medicaid when you get up there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or Medicare. Right. Or, uh, what do they call that? Uh, I don't know. That's right. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff, praise the Lord. Uh, Luke chapter number 4 verse 16 I gotta quit preaching soon Luke chapter 4 verse 16 the Bible said and he came and to this is referring to Jesus by the way the word he here is a pronoun it's a it's a masculine pronoun that refers to to a man the man Christ Jesus you do not have preferred pronouns that's right that's right you don't you don't get to prefer your pronouns right your pronouns are assigned to you at birth when you were he became a, when you were when you were came as a man or a woman. Right. Yes. And if you're a man, then your pronouns are he, him, and his. That's right. And if you're a girl, your pronouns are she and her. Right? But you don't get to pick your pronouns. That's right. right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Come on. You, know the, you know the public schools are doing everything they can to tell your children they can pick their pronouns. Right. Come on. That's right. 
You don't get to pick your pronouns. Yeah. You don't get to decide who you are. God already decided that. What we need to do is step up into who God says and He called us to be. And then we'll find ourselves being happier. But nevertheless, the Bible says verse 16. And again, I gotta go home before I offend everybody. I, I preach it so hard I'm offending myself. <laughs> hey, I, I, I will be honest with you though. If I'm being honest with you, there is one person that I'm preaching at today. There's one person in this building I'm preaching at. Just one. And it's me. Amen. It's me. Oh, yeah. That's right. I see shortage. Yeah. Yeah, amen. 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 God help us. That's right. I see shortage. Yes, sir. And it's making me nervous. Yeah, that's right, brother. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I see I see the boats waiting off the coast. I can't get them unloaded. Right. The problem is, I don't even know if I want to get them unloaded anymore. Right. Yeah, that's scary, brother. Amen. It's me. It's me. Now, if it's also you, then great. But if, but I'm telling you, I'm preaching to me. Uh -huh. Me. I wonder. I wonder sometimes if I will ever go back to church. Sunday night. Uh -huh. Right. And that shortage uh -huh. is bothering me. Right. You see, Brother Jason, why don't you just open it up? Because I need some laborers to enter into the harvest. Right. And when laborers enter the harvest, then I guess I can open it up. But right. until then, I'm going to kill myself trying to be everything to everybody at all times. Amen. It's true. That's right. But in the process, I still see the shelves empty. Right. Mm -hmm. How about this? We don't need to. We don't need to have a spiritual shortage of Bible time, do we? No. no. Mm -hmm. We don't need to have a spiritual shortage of time in the house of God, do we? No. No. We don't. I would submit this to you as well. We don't need to have a spiritual shortage of kindness. Right. Amen. Amen. For sure, brothers. The Bible said that we ought to be kind one toward another. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. Kindness. This world is a cranky place. Amen. Cranky. Cranky. Sometimes it's hangry. Hangry. Yeah. Yeah. Hangry. My wife will tell you I do get hangry. <laughs> and if she starts to see the hangry coming out. Sure, if we're on the road trip, she'll pull over immediately and give me a candy bar because she knows she don't want to see the hangar go. <laughs> but I'll be driving most of the time. Sometimes she drives, but I'll be driving. She's like, you need to get yourselves a meeting. I say, yeah, I do. <laughs> Before church this morning, I went into Walmart to buy something for the church, actually. And when I got in there, there was this worker working there, and, and, and he was working. And what I needed was behind the shelf, and it was locked. So I had to walk over and he's, he's unloading stuff out of a bucket and trying to put it on, the, on a different shelf. And I had to walk over to him and say, hey, excuse me, sir, can you help me? And when I said, excuse me, sir, can you help me? <laughs> I'll never forget this because it stuck out so much in my mind. He took his, what he was loading, he was about to load on the shelf, and he pinched it <laughs> hard down back in that bucket. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, sir, customers like me are the reason why you got a bucket to get stuff out of. Right. Right? right? I mean, customers are feeding this whole thing. You need to be kind to the customers. Yeah. But even beyond that, I thought to myself, man, who knows what is going on Amen. in right. that man's Amen. life? Right. right. Amen. Who knows? Yes. Don't know. Maybe right. I met him when his wife just divorced him. Right. Maybe I met him when his wife just died of COVID in the hospital. Right. Maybe I met him when his, when his kids are sick in the ICU and they're young, but they still have a lungs collapse and still dying of COVID in the hospital. Maybe, who knows where I met that man at? Maybe he's suicidal. Right. Yeah, that's right. All Maybe right. he went to too many black magic uh, seances and now he's got himself wrapped up in the occult and devil possession. Who knows where right. he came from? Who knows what his story is? The only thing I know at this moment is he needs some kindness. Amen. Right. And I thought, 
Where's your manager at? Hallelujah. <laughs> but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't call for a manager. I said, sir, I, I really appreciate your help. I'm sorry I had to interrupt what you had going on. I know you're busy, but if you could help me, I'd appreciate it so much. And you know what? From that moment, he changed his whole attitude toward me. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. The world That's is a right. creaky place, man. Right. That's your it. You know what it needs? It needs some kindness. Yes, sir. So I say to you today, if you want to go change your world, mm -hmm. hold the door open for somebody. Yeah, that's good, brother. Come on. Amen. Yeah. I mean, even if it takes you an extra 10 seconds, just stand and hold it for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it for them. That's right. Love on somebody. Yeah. You know what? You know what a compliment to do to somebody? It'll make their whole day. Amen. That's right. That's right. Compliment somebody's uh, shoes or their attire or their hair. Yeah. yeah. My tools. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my, my wife would tell you I got an addiction of my own. I can't stop buying tools. <laughs> I have fun though. And right now I've got nearly half my house on uh, as a smart house. I can say to my phone right now, hey Google, turn on my living room lights and turn them on for me. Uh, don't do that. Uh, and, and it's cool. I can tell to pull, pull up my security cameras and do that for me. It's nice. I, uh -huh. I'm having a lot of fun doing it too. Uh -huh. I gotta go home. Uh, it's getting late. Yesterday, Rashonda went out to get me a Diet Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> and she turned all the hot light, hot lights in my house to strobe lights. <laughs> her phone. She's at the store and she's putting strobe lights on my, in the house, so I shut them off. I said, hey Google, shut the lights off. <laughs> And then, she, and then she went over to my mom and dad's and made them turn them on and, and say spooky things to the old man. Oh, praise the Lord. Times are time changing. I don't even shut off my lights by switch. I just say, hey, Google, turn my light off. And it knows what I'm doing. It's cool. It's cool. If you want me to do it to your house, I bill out at $100 an hour. Just let me know. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love you.